Hello YouTube, I am Arnd Peter, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this uh, platforming Goomba effect. So as you know from Mario, the term Goomba generally refers to an enemy that can be killed from above, but not from the sides, which is exactly what I have here. If I go to enemy from the side, I die. If I go to it from above, I kill it. So that is what we'll be making uh, in this video. So uh, some quick notes. Um, if you look at the progress bar, I've split up this uh, YouTube video into sections so you can uh, browse around more easily. And also, if you look at the description, you can find the source code of this video, and you can find uh, credits for all the artists who have made this art, because um, I certainly did not make these this pixel art. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so in this project, I have a bunch of sprites that I've already loaded. I have tile sets for those sprites, and I have some rooms with pre-depth tile sets. So we're gonna be working in this RM Goomba room, which has my player object, some solids, and uh, some uh, art created from the tile sets. For as far as objects, I already have a player object and a solid object, and the player object is to, is programmed to move like a basic platformer. And if you have any question any questions about how to do that, feel free to check out my basic platformer tutorial, also linked in the description. Okay, that's everything for our starting point. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new object for that Goomba. Uh, so if we look at the sprites, I'm gonna use this S imp sprite. And um, I'm gonna go over to objects, make an object, call it O Goomba. And let's go and give it that sprite. So um, the core logic is gonna happen in the collision event with the player, that's where this it's going to happen. So I'm going to add event, go to collision event with the player. So once the Goomba collides with the player, this code will be triggered. Here's kind of the rough flow that we want to follow. So we want to say if it's a vertical collision, then the player bounces. Otherwise, the game restarts. So um, I actually want to start with this player bounce logic. So to do that, I'm going to just go ahead and make the condition for this if statement true, so it always passes. And then we can handle the vertical collision check later. So let's go ahead and get started on the player bounce logic. So to implement this, I want to essentially change the player's vertical speed to go upwards. So I have a rule, a personal rule, where wherever I want to modify a object's variables, I want the logic for that modification to be in the object itself. So in cases like this where I have a separate object like the Goomba wanting to make a, a modification to, to another object like the player, I want to create a function in the player to handle that use case. So here's how I would do that. So I'm going to say with O player, so this happens within the context of the player. This code happens like as if it were ran from the player object. And I'm going to say bounce. I'm going to call the bounce function. So now let's go ahead and create the bounce function in the player. The way I do that is I go to the create event of the player. And I'm going to just go ahead and define the function as follows. So here I've defined a bounce function. And this is a function specifically for the player. Um, no other object can use this function. And I'm setting the vertical speed to be equal to my jump speed, which is essentially the same logic that I follow when I do jumps. Um, so that's how I do that. Uh, if I go back to the Goomba, this should highlight. Perfect. Um, and now whenever we collide at the player, the player should do this little bounce. So let's go ahead and test that out. Oh my gosh. I'm going to go ahead and set this Goomba room to be the main room. And I'm going to throw the Goomba in here and go ahead and flip it along the X. Now let's give it a try. So here if I jump on top, I bounce. Perfect. But if I come from the side, I bounce as well. Not so perfect. Um, the next thing I want to do is look at the vertical collision. So let's talk a little bit more about what exactly this collision event means. So one thing to be aware of is if I look at my sprites, every sprite has this collision mask dictating uh, what its collidable area is. 
and so you can see I have one for the for the imp and I have one for the player. So I've went ahead and made a little mock-up in my sprite editor to demonstrate how this works. So a collision happens whenever um, two, the collision box of two sprites overlaps, like so. And then in our case, we want to know if it's a vertical collision, like so, or if it's a horizontal collision, like so. Um, so how do we look at a collision like this and determine if this is a vertical one or a horizontal one? That's the fundamental question that we're going to ask. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a quick and dirty approach, and then I'm going to show you my preferred approach. So fundamentally, what's one thing we can look at to try and determine this is to look at this, this distance right here. So this represents distance between the y value of the Goomba and the y value of the player. And remember that these origin points represent what the x, y position is. Um, so if this is big, we can assume that it's a vertical collision. If this is small, we can assume that the player is much lower and this is probably a horizontal collision. Here's essentially how we'd implement that. We'd look at the y value of the current object, which is the Goomba, which is right over there. And then we look at the y value of the player. Remember, the dot is kind of like an apostrophe s in programming. So this is saying o players y. And that position is right there. And we look at the difference. And then if this is a big difference, if it's greater than some number, then we bounce. If it's a small difference, then we assume that it's um, a deadly collision. So my problem with it is we need to figure out what this number is. And I've done this in many projects where I just kind of just put a random number in it and I just figure out like which number makes sense for my project. But I kind of want to give you guys a more generic approach. So I'm going to go and walk through how we would do that. And it's a little more code, but it'll probably transfer over to your project a little bit better. So if we kind of restart this conversation, what I'm really interested in is uh, the y value of the bottom of the player's collision box, which would be about there, and the y value of the top of the Goomba's collision box, which would be about there. Let's think about how big the difference between these two values are. If the player if the player is coming down here from the top, there's only so far that they can go without it being considered a horizontal collision. Like for example, if if you see something like that, you probably assume that it's a vertical collision. But if you see a collision like that, technically I guess if the player is moving downward very fast, they could end up in this position and be considered a vertical collision. But most of the time, uh, this would be we would probably think of this as a horizontal collision. Um, so I just kind of gave away the key the note there. Uh, how fast is the player moving vertically? That's a factor in determining whether that overlap would be considered a vertical collision or not. So what we're kind of interested in is if there's a collision here, and then if this distance between the two, if that is smaller than the player's vertical velocity, then this is probably a vertical collision. And here's what the logic for that might look like. So um, we look at the difference between the, the player bottom and the Goomba top. If that is smaller than this uh, vertical velocity, then we know it's probably a vertical collision. Otherwise, it's probably a, a horizontal collision. So the next question is, where do we get these Goomba top and player bottom variables? That's a little tedious and involves some more game maker specific information, so I'm going to jump into that separately. So here we have the collision box, and there's a couple, there's a couple of variables we're going to, need, going to need to determine the y position of the top of the collision box and the bottom of the collision box. One of those is the sprite y offset. That represents the y position of the origin of the sprite. And another one is the top of the collision box relative to the sprite. So that's this distance. This isn't the absolute y, di y value of the top of the collision box, but this is like the distance within the sprite. The nice thing about sprite y offset is it's a built-in variable. We can just use it directly. Uh, coal box top, as I wrote it, it doesn't actually exist in GameMaker, so we need to have a separate line to calculate it, and that looks like this. I'm, I'm using this function to get the top of the collision box for the sprite, but the problem with that is it's not scaled. So if our sprite has any scaling, that needs to be considered too. So we need to multiply it by our image y scale. 
um, the sprite Y offset actually already has the scaling multiplied automatically. And then I need to do something similar for coal box bottom that looks like this. And there you go, very similar, um, kind of the same idea. So now we want to use these variables to figure out what the Y position of the top of our collision box is and the bottom. So if I look at the top of the collision box, I can use this equation and to break that to break that down, I start with my y position, which puts me right about there. And then I subtract the sprite offset to go up, which if we look at the sprite offset, that puts me right about there. And then I can add the collision box top, which if we look at that distance puts me right about there. That's exactly where I want to be. And I can do the same thing for the Goomba bottom. And here's that. And notice this is exactly the same, except instead of adding top at the end, we add the coal box bot at the end. So that way, instead of going down by this distance, we go down by this longer distance. One thing you might notice is that the Goomba bot is actually the same as the Y position itself. And that stems from the fact that for this sprite, we happen to have the sprite Y offset and the coal box bot be the same thing. But that's not the case for all projects, so I'm just doing this in a generic way so it works for, so I can ensure that it works for your project as well. So we can calculate the top and bottom of the collision box using the logic here, and then we can use the logic over here to determine if it's a vertical collision or not. And here's this work if I added that same logic into the player collision event. So this is uh, several lines of code, but um, it should make sense after having explained it in the photo editor. So I'm doing the exact same thing to find the tops and bottoms of the collision boxes. Uh, some differences to note here are that I had to use the O player dot several times to get the, to make sure that I got the player's sprite index and not the sprite index of the current object being the Goomba. Um, and same for the Y scale and the Y over here. I need to make sure I had the right objects variables. And I'm also using this var modifier here, which I'm not sure if you've seen before, but the var modifier says that these variables are temporary. We don't need them long term. Ultimately, we only need these variables to exist long enough in order to figure out if we have a vertical collision or not. Um, and by the way, I decided to kind of make vertical collision its own variable. Um, I could have just done this line of code logic within the within the if statement, but um, whenever I have something like this where the meaning isn't immediately clear, I like to put a separate variable in there to kind of give it that extra level of clarity and readability. Okay, so now let's um, go ahead and put the alternative in here. Just do a quick game restart if it's a side collision. And let's give this a shot. So if I hit him from the side, the game restarts. If I hit him from the top, I jump up. And then as the last kind of cherry on top, I want it to actually die and do something satisfying. So let's have it die and um, maybe give us a coin or something. So to make it die, after we do the have the player bounce, we just run instance destroy. And we also want to create a coin. So let's go ahead and write the line for that. Here we go. And I'm going to create this coin object in a second. But for the other parameters, I'm saying I want to create it at some position. I want to create it on my layer. So for as far as the position goes, let's go ahead and jump over to the Goomba, which is S imp. And let's think about where we want the coin to appear. If I move around the origin, maybe I want the coin to spawn about there. So that's at um, a Y position of 34 relative to the sprite. But then if I hit Control Z, you can see that it was it's currently at 51. So th that would be Y minus, uh, what's the math there? 51 minus 34 is 47, 17? Yeah, I think it's 17. I mean, Y minus 17 this is where we want the coin to show up. And then to make the coin, I'm going to hit, I'm going to go over to the object section, hit Alt O to make a new object, call it O coin, and give it the S coin sprite. That's all we need to do there. Okay. So earlier I said 17 seemed about right, so let's do y minus 17. And that should be it. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. And there you go. We have side collision, we have vertical collision, and on the vertical collision, uh, the Goomba dies and we get a coin in its place. And that is all for this tutorial. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you did find it helpful, then you might be interested to know that this is actually part of a playlist where I'm putting together the this platforming castle game. You can see the final product on the screen right now. And if there's any effect in there that you find that you think looks cool, I have tutorials for all of them. So one of the specific effects that might be a nice follow-up to this Goomba tutorial is the coin explosion effect. So rather than having the, the Goomba create one coin that you can't interact with, you can um, create a bunch of coins and have it explode out in a really satisfying way. So I hope to see you there in more of my tutorials, and thank you so much for watching today.